Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm recording on the road because I'm stuck in traffic. Because I was so busy, I didn't even realize what time it was, and I got out a wee bit later than my normal time, which unfortunately does happen. Today was a tough day. It was a day that kind of sucked. First thing, early in the morning, I had a water bath, uh, but it's in a laboratory, which is in an operating room, so I have to dress in the scrubs, take a cart, go drain a water bath, because it's not powering on, and the staff just didn't think that maybe I would move it, since it's obviously broke, and I had to spend 20 minutes draining the stupid thing, and that's not even the worst part. I was, you know, the first thing you do when you show up on site is you verify the error and or try and collect as much information as possible. Well, here's the thing is as soon as I approached it, it was unplugged and the GF, GFCI was popped. I mean, I could see the light on right behind the unit. So I looked at the lady that told me it's not powering on and I said, well, it's unplugged. I said, Okay, um, is there a reason why it's unplugged? And they said, yeah, the GFCI is also broke. It needs to be changed out too. I said, okay, well, uh, I guess we'll, we'll see about that because usually, you know, if GFCIs are, are bad, there's usually a physical problem. Like you can kind of feel the crunchiness in, in the buttons. So anyway, um, I proceeded to take the power cord and I plugged it into neighboring electrical outlets. Um, because there's several circuits there on that wall. And the laboratory lady, she was getting a little upset. And I'm like, why, why would this lady be getting upset? She's like, we already tried everything. And she said, we already tried plugging in other electrical outlets. It's not powering on. I'm like, okay. Well, I had to explain to her that rule number one, rule number one is that when you show up, you start troubleshooting from ground zero, all right? This is a 60, 60 pound water bath, okay? If I don't have to transport it downstairs for a quick fix, I'm not gonna transport it, all right? So anyway, uh, I verified it is in fact not powering on. Um, you know, I've tried everything. This type of water bath, it's a Helmer brand, which means it's got a uh, resettable circuit breaker in the back of it. It does not have a fuse-based IEC, which is there's a fuse right next to your IEC power input on the device. It doesn't have that. It's a, it's a um, RF filter type um, IEC connector. So that means that there's no fuse in it. Uh, although I guess you could treat it like a fuse. Um, so anyway, at that point, you, you know, if the front panel is not turning on, then that means the relays aren't going to kick on. Nothing's going to work. So you start thinking that maybe it's a DC power supply because obviously it has a DC conversion in order to power things like, you know, uh, the front panel, which turns everything on. So, um, with that being said, I packed it up and I brought it downstairs and the unit did in fact have uh, an electrical fire inside the unit, um, but that was because of the the agitation motors where it shake the blood sample up and down to um, to defrost it. So there's a ground wire that connects the back of the IEC connector to chassis ground, right? And it had rubbed in on the um, the hot wire, which connects from uh, one piece of the uh, 15 amp resettable breaker which connects to the back of the IEC. So there's one wire that goes from the back of the IEC to the resettable breaker, which then goes to the front, okay? That wire, which is past the resettable breaker, is the one that rubbed through. And because it's past the breaker, it's not gonna trip the breaker. All right, so that was the first problem. So I, you guys know that I've had the surgical table in my area for a little while. Well, that itself has been a whole conundrum. And up until just moments ago, which I, I finally sent my last email, you know, stating my position on this, but up until moments ago, it's still been a matter that's in contest. So 
I had a guy, an old grumpy guy who works in the operating room. He has made my life miserable for well over the last year. Um, there's a long story. I should do a whole entire story based on D. We'll call him D. His name is D, all right? We'll call him that. But he's an older grumpy, grumpy guy. He thinks he's a biomed, but he is not. He, in fact, just orders stuff for the operating room. Well, the table is down in my area. It's next to my workbench because until I get a working remote control, I cannot clear the table as being fully functional. Since I can't clear the table, it's sitting next to my bench. Well, he brought down a remote control from another table and tested it out. I don't know why. When, when I wasn't there, after a time that he probably knows that I'm going to be gone for the day. But here's the thing. People are not allowed to touch medical devices that are in Biomed until they have been cleared or deemed safe by Biomed. You are not just allowed to come down and start tampering with a device that's still under repair. Not only could they get hurt, but I could get hurt because I left it in a certain condition and here he plugs it in or something like that. So basically what happened is he came down, he tested out the remote and he wrote an email to the OR director and several other people and what he said is that he brought another remote down and tested it and the overrides, which are the manual controls which are on the pedestal of the table, he said the overrides still weren't working so the table still broke. I go in this morning, I did not know that he tampered with the surgical table and I, I did think that, hey, it looks like it's, you know, more center than what it was, but I, I didn't think anything else of it. And then I touched the overrides to kind because of, I was going to bend it into a beach chair so it takes less room in my area. And it, it ran for about three or four seconds and then it shut off. All right. Three or four seconds. And I was like, that's odd. I just changed the batteries in this thing yesterday. What D did... D. Uh, D came down to my area. He hooked up a remote while the table was unplugged and he ran the batteries completely down to empty. Right? He ran the batteries down to empty and then he broadcast it to everybody that it still is broken. That's what I'm dealing with, guys. So here's the thing I thought it was all settled. All right? Well, I had an email that came down at the very end of the day that was from the OR director and she wrote and said, what's going on? I heard the table's still broken. Well, I had to write an email. I normally don't name people, but this time deserved to be named, all right? So I, I wrote D, came down and he was playing around with the table with a remote centering the table while the table was unplugged and he ran the batteries down to empty says the batteries were empty of course the table override controls are not going to work on the pedestal and that's basically a summary of what I wrote in the email is that he actually ran it to empty and that's why it quit working because the batteries were just changed and somehow throughout the day, somebody unplugged it from where I had left it. You know, it happens. Things happen. By the way, I would have discovered it the next day when I come back in and see my piece of equipment, right? But for somebody to come down, tamper with medical devices, and diagnose a problem that wasn't even part of the initial problem, and then report it to the operating room director and multiple other people, including my boss. Yeah, that's messed up, man. Anyway, guys, that's the way it is, man. So I hope you all had a, a wonderful day. <laughs> Maybe better than mine. It's it's not been my week or my months, so um, I'm just tired, guys. I'm tired. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Don't mean this to be much of a gripe. I still love this job. It's just I don't always love where I do the job. That's all. Thanks for watching, guys.